Hello, welcome to East Ayrshire Council's budget presentation. The Council has now set out its proposals for its budget next year and we are presently consulting on those proposals and we want your views and comments. At this stage, all of our proposals are on the Council's website and I would urge you to take time to look at these and there is also a short survey through which we'll be able to get your reactions and thoughts and suggestions. Before looking at the proposals though, it may be helpful for you to hear from the Council's executive management team on the figures we're working to, some of the planning assumptions we are, we're making about next year, the challenges we face and the changes we're making and on how you can get involved. The financial outlook for the country is uncertain. There's so much going on that we've no control over. For example, we're waiting to see what the new Chancellor will say in his autumn statement in November. There's uncertainty about what happens when they leave the European Union. And we're seeing volatility in financial markets and the value of the pound and in oil prices. And of course, we're waiting to see how the Scottish Government will allocate the funds that we'll have available next year. All of these things affect how much money there will be for our services. Well, I'm optimistic that we will be able to deal with whatever the outcome is, but nothing that we're hearing says that we will be getting more money from the government, so we can be fairly certain that things will be tough. At the same time, our costs are going up. Pay costs will go up. We're committed to paying the living wage and encouraging our suppliers to do the same. We're seeing inflation rising and our contract prices tend to be linked to inflation. We know there's increasing need and demand for social care and protection for young people, for vulnerable adults and for older people and we need to respond to those pressures. And there are certain national commitments that we want to honour, like maintaining the number of teachers in our schools and expanding early years childcare. So if our costs are going up and our government grant is coming down, then that means we have a gap that we need to close by finding savings. In March, we calculated the gap would be £9 million, but a lot has changed since then. We've also used national guidance to model what the gap between spending and income might be ne next year. And that brings out a range of numbers from a best case of £9 million to a worst case of £22 million. We made a number of financial planning assumptions for 2017-18. The first one being that the significant reduction in Scottish Government grant, which we saw for 2016-17, won't be repeated. Last year we lost around £10 million in Government grant and for this year we're assuming that's a one year only adjustment and won't be repeated for 2017-18. Last year as well, the Scottish Government increased funding for health and social care budgets by £250 million for Scotland, and our share of that was £6.2 million. Again, we're assuming that will be consolidated for 2017-18 and will be repeated. Fees and charges we expect to go up by at least 2.5%, but services are free to look at their costs and the market they're operating in and increase by a higher or lower amount than that. Initially, we had assumed we would be able to increase council tax by about 5%, which is £2.5 million extra income for the council. The Scottish Government, however, have capped increases to 3%, which would be about £1.5 million extra for 17-18. And finally, we assumed there would be some flexibility in teacher numbers, which uh, the Scottish Government have been keen to maintain. That flexibility has not been forthcoming, and we will be retaining the same number of teachers for 2017-18 as we have at the present. We've had to make assumptions because we don't know the, the real position and won't know the real position until December uh, this year. But nevertheless, it's important to get ahead and identify what we may need to do to close the budget gap. In East Ayrshire, we're proud of our health and social care services. People who use these services and external regulators tell us that they're really high quality. In recent years, we've been working hard towards the integration of health and social care services and we're seen as one of the leaders in that field in Scotland. What we're trying to do is to make sure our children get the best start in life, to make sure that people get good information about health when we provide services, they are of high quality and also that we address any inequalities within our uh, communities. Very recently, we've been out going round our localities, our local communities, and speaking to people about what their priorities are. 
and that's been hugely rewarding and listening to people who work in communities and people who live in communities about how we can improve things. Like every other area in Scotland, we have a number of challenges. We have more people who are looking for our services and there are less resources available to deliver these services. The scale of the challenge is that just doing things better, getting more efficient, won't actually meet the challenges. We need to do things differently. We need to do things to make sure people still deliver the important outcomes I said earlier, but can do that within the resources available. So over the next few months, we'll be speaking to people about how we can do that. We'll be working alongside the council, we'll be working alongside the NHS board to make sure that we can continue to deliver the best possible services for the people of East Ayrshire. We want to listen to any comments that you can give to us. We want to hear that and I hope you see that reflected back in the proposals that we bring forward. The Council has a clear vision for the future. We want East Ayrshire to be a place with strong, safe and attractive communities where everyone enjoys a good quality of life and has access to opportunities and choices that meet people's needs. We work hard to achieve this and over recent years, we've made significant progress, amongst other things, in recycling household waste, in improving local housing conditions, and in building new council houses across East Ayrshire. But we recognise that the support given by local communities has been vital to achieving that success. And, despite the challenges that we face, we see clear opportunities to achieve more in the future by changing how we work with our communities, by doing things differently, by keeping things simple. And we want our communities to be clean, green and vibrant. We're forging new ways of working with communities to help unlock the skills and talents of local people. 16 communities have already developed and published their own community-led action plans with more to follow. And exciting new funding opportunities through participatory budgeting will soon be available to help communities across East Ayrshire achieve their ambitions. Our budget proposals for next year reflect the extent of the current financial pressures in the Council's budget. However, we believe that these proposals offer the best prospects for us to continue our work to tackle inequalities and to support our local communities. But we are keen to hear your own views, so get involved and let us know what you think. Thank you. So, consultation is open until the 16th of November. The Council's Cabinet will take decisions on the 30th of November. Now, as many of you may know, this is in advance of the Scottish Government announcing its settlement for local government next year. That won't happen until the 15th of December. If we need to make any further decisions, then we will revisit matters. But at this stage, I want to thank you for taking time to be involved and we look forward to getting your comments and your thoughts. Many thanks. <laughs>